Last time I did this video was 2013 and well, a lot has changed since then. It's a gear guide. This is all of the travel gear cameras equipment that I use to film my travel videos. Let's go through it all, shall we? This is my baby, my pride and joy, my main camera. So this is a Sony A7S Mark II. It is specifically designed for video. The reasons I love this camera is because one, it's got like all of these ports and jacks so you can hook things up to, but it does up to 120 FPS, also 60. So I can do awesome slow-mo in this. It's one of the reasons why I love it. Um, it's also really great in low light. Now the lens I use for that is this one. This is the only lens I use for my Sony and it is the 24 to 240. So it covers a lot. Um, and as you can see, it's an FE, which means um, that it's for the full frame camera, which the Sony is. And it's a 3.5 to 6.3 um, f-stop. But this is a pretty nice lens um, it does the job for me i am probably looking to upgrade this very soon but this is my main camera i switched to that about a year ago before that i was using this camera that you see here and this one is my old previous camera this is the canon 70d and attached to it is the sigma 18 to 35 mil so this is my secondary camera that i use which is my vlogging camera because it has the flip out screen, which is awesome for vlogging. And I put little wind socks here to help cut the noise down because I cannot plug in an external mic in. But this is the Sony RX100 Mark V. So this is the fifth one. Amazing camera. Bit pricey, this was quite pricey for a point shoot, but for vlogging, fantastic. Another great option, which is the one I upgraded from since this one was having issues focusing. Still an amazing vlogging camera, and this one's the Canon G7X. As you can see, it has a flip screen, and that's my fuzzy windsock, which I just bought these from eBay. <laughs> I just bought a whole bunch of them from eBay, and they're fantastic for cutting the wind sound for these small cameras. Now, these are two of my older lenses that I used for my Canon 70D. So these are my previous lenses that I use. They're still really good, and sometimes I do bring my Canon 70D out, but these were what I previously used. I just wanted to show you in case you were wondering. This is the Tokina. 11 to 16. This is a wonderful wide angle, very affordable. It is an f 2.8, so it gives you a beautiful bouquet, great wide angle lens. This one was my L series, my main big honcho Canon lens that I had. It's a 24 to 105 millimeter. Like I said, it's an L series, so it is a nice glass, very nice lens, expensive lens, but that was my main go to lens for the longest time for all my videos previous to this year. This one's just an adapter that I bought online um, so I can use these lenses still on my Sony camera, although I don't really, but I have, but I have used them and it gives me the option. Um, and then I occasionally do 360 videos and that's, this is what I film it on. It is the Samsung Gear 360. This is what it looks like. That's a little stand that it has, although I usually put it on a tripod. And it's basically just two 180 degree cameras. So that's how my 360 degree videos get filmed with this camera. And then this is my third camera that I typically bring. I always bring three cameras. So I always bring my main camera, my small camera, so my vlogging camera, and then a GoPro. This is the Hero 4. I don't have the Hero 5 yet, um, but I'll probably upgrade, I don't know, maybe next year. Uh, plus all the millions of accessories. I have a head strap. As you can see there, I also have the GoPro, the Go Pole, which is a pole for like swimming that extends. As you can see, it extends all the way. And I have a floaty back door on that. So for water sports, etc. This is a red filter that I use for my GoPro and that's for taking away the green tint when I go diving. An absolute must if you are diving with, um, yeah, if you're taking your GoPro for diving. A suction cup, this is a suction cup for the GoPro for like boats or cars or anything else that I wanna stick it onto. 
spare battery for the GoPro um, charger so I can charge them externally. Um, and this one's my Sony charger for my big camera. Now this isn't all the chargers. I tried to keep them out of this because it's just a bunch of chargers and cords um, that I need to bring with me as well. They're not as interesting, but I do travel with them. So I do travel with my cords and my chargers. They're just not right here. Here I have a spare battery for my Sony camera because while this camera is amazing, the battery dies so quickly. So I had to have a spare battery for that. Um, I can also, the beauty of this camera though, is I can also charge it. So this is a gigantic battery pack. I can charge my GoPro, my secondary camera, my big camera, my Sony camera, my phone, all of that I could charge through this power pack. Um, this is the Anchor, it's 20,000 milliampers. It's a lot of power. These are filters that I use. They are, um, I use a, this is a circular polarizing filter. I also use a UV pol uh, filter. The UV filter is just to prevent like dust and dirt. The circular polarizing is for glare and to like pump up the like blues and the greens in my videos. Sound is very, very important when you're traveling. There are multiple ways that you can record it. You can record it through the camera. So um, I do use inboard audio like I was showing on my smaller cameras. I also have external audio recorders like this one that, you were, that I'm recording this video with. This is called a lav mic um, and they hook up to a pack like this that I carry in my back pocket like so and then it wirelessly wirelessly transmits audio to the camera which has another pack on it. This is great for when I'm talking in big spaces and we're doing any kind of hosting. It gives you nice crisp clear sound. The Rode mic, this is an onboard directional mic, doesn't take time to set up so I use that for all other audio recordings as much as I can because the inboard audio is not great with this. It's doable but not great so I attach this on, it attaches on top there and then I have a windsock to cut the wind. This is just one of the dead cats that comes with the Rode mic. This is an external audio recorder so it's just a zoom mic, that's the H1, that's for recording sounds or voiceovers while on the road. SD card holder. This is a waterproof Pelican case that I carry all my SD cards. There are more the SD cards than this. They're just kind of scattered in my cameras. This is a really good one. The Lex are professional. 64 gigs. I have a couple of those. Um, the SanDisk is pretty good as well. And then these ones are the mini SD cards, which look kind of like that. That one's a Samsung 64 gigabyte card and it just plugs into that. This is a cleaning pen that I use to clean the lenses, keep them nice and clean. That's the little soft brush. Uh, this is just a USB. I always just carry a USB with me. This is the DJI Phantom 4, but I have ordered the DJI Mavic Pro. It is on its way. This is a beautiful drone. This is a beautiful drone, but it's really big, as you can see. I also have a spare battery for it because I only get about 20 minutes of battery on that, and I always wanna make sure we have enough battery to last. That's why I carry spare batteries. That's why I carry an extra battery pack and more spare batteries. I always wanna make sure I have enough battery to film everything that I need to film because I never wanna be stuck with a lack of batteries. Tripods, now I got a lot of different tripods that I carry with me. Don't always bring all these tripods in one go. I definitely don't bring all these tripods in one go, but I always have one of my Gorilla Pods. So I got this size, which is a smaller size, which is good for my vlogging camera. And then I've got uh, this honker, which is the like crazy heavy duty one. And that one is good for my big camera because it's quite a bit heavier. So you have to make sure you have a good size uh, Gorilla Pod to hold up your camera. It also comes with this like ball head. So this is the Joby one. Um, so I can have, so I can like kind of rotate and move my camera around. The reason why these Gorilla Pods are so amazing is because I can bend them and I can put them on objects. I can put them on objects like such. And then I've got a makeshift tripod or I can put them on the ground and they're really small and flexible. Even that size itself is pretty darn small for a tripod for carrying around. So I like to bring it around with me. It's very handy. These are my main big tripods that I like to bring with me. This is the one I typically bring because it's small and it's lightweight. It is the Manfrotto Compact. So it's the MKC3 
tripod gets the job done. However, it's not very good for fluid head movement. As you can see here, this is not a very good head for fluid video movement. So if I want kind of more stationary shots or time lapses, that's fine. Or if I'm doing vlogs, that's fine. If I want something a little bit more pizzazzy, I go through this one. This one is the Sirio. It's a two part thing. So the Sirio, that is the legs. And then I have a Manfrotto fluid tripod head for the top part. This one is much more fluid and gives me way more options when doing videos, um, filming for pans or tilts, etc. It's just, as you can tell, a lot bigger and more heavier. So I don't really bring it on like backpacking trips or small trips. I kind of sacrifice it. Um, only if I know I'm doing like crazy heavy duty filming would I bring that. And then the last stuff we need is the editing gear to bring it all together. So I use a couple different things. One, this is my MacBook, my editing suite. This is the older MacBook Pro. I mean, not the one that literally just came out. It does the job. So this is my main editing suite. Then I also have my adapters. These are very important. These are multi-country adapters that I can kind of pick and choose uh, to wherever I'm going because my electronics are useless without the proper adapters. A hard drive to store all of my footage because I don't store it on my computer. I store it on my hard drive because there are gigabytes and gigabytes and hundreds of gigabytes worth of footage on this. Uh, so this is a two terabyte hard drive. I don't really recommend this one. It's not the best, but it is durable if you need one with like rubbers that you want to drop around a bit as well as headphones. So these ones are specifically noise canceling headphones, meaning that they cancel out humming noises that you find on airplanes, on buses, that you find with um, appliances. They make it a lot nicer to edit. So I do bring heavy duty headphones because sound is very important. I hope that has given you a bit more insight into what I bring and my gear that I use, but you know, it's not all about gear. This is a lot of gear and it's taken me multiple years to kind of put together and figure out what works for me and what I like. So I highly recommend testing and trying things out and figuring out what gear is best suited towards you. However, though, if you do like the gear that I've picked or you wanna find out more information, down below I'm leaving links to um, where you can find them, so where you can purchase them yourself if you're interested in buying them. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more travel advice and adventures. And I'll see you guys again with another video. Bye.